Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. We're going to call the town hall meeting for Marion Township on Thursday, March 14th. The order is time to step 7 at 1 p.m. Uh, our first item on the agenda, as always, is by the leaders. I guess it's going to be addressed. I joined the Institute of Time, a leader in the United States of America, and to the Republic of the United States of America, a First and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, everyone in that region who rest the board to do so. You want to talk, please? Sure thing. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the microphone located in the center of the room. We ask that you. Sign in on the sheet in front. If you plan on making a public comment and clearly state your name and address for the record. The way we are going to run tonight's meeting is we are going to have a presentation from the wastewater engineer right up front. Hopefully, that will address some comments or questions or, or generate some additional ones. We're going to get to the latter half of the meeting. I also would like to mention that in accordance with the looking out for everybody's key things and time, we are going to. End the meeting at 9 p.m. and we are going to limit public comment to five minutes per person to so have a filibuster situation. The meeting purpose is to make sure that the current information, kind of the, the what, why, and how of where we are currently in the Act 37 is related, and hopefully everybody has an important understanding of it at the end of the night. We ask that everybody, ourselves included on the board, uh, be civil and constructive. If we have a situation where that cannot be maintained, uh, we will either ask that individual to leave or we will adjourn the meeting. So, yeah. at this time, uh, yep, uh, actually, that's a good point. So, if you haven't silenced your cell phone, please silence your cell phone. I'm going to do that. I need to do that too. Um, yep. And uh, as always, we are recording. Thank you. Um, so, yes, uh, do we have a question already? Uh, it's all you. Okay. Um, oh, yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I am here with Barbie. I'm the chairman of the board. This is Larry and Sumaski. Uh, she's the vice chairman. This is Jesse Haber. He's our newly appointed supervisor that's filling the vacancy for Jim Brooks after Jim retired. And then we have Lisa, Susan, and Val, who are our secretary staff. We have Chuck, who is the engineer, Paula, who is our solicitor. Joe and Kim, who are our wastewater professionals, to be fire one specifically to tackle the Act 537 and the one lot maintenance that is required. Um, Joe, I think you're, you're going to start this whole thing off. So grab your clicker and yeah. make your phone with that stand should be on and take away. All right, so everybody can hear me. My name is Joe, uh, and uh, the Secretary of Professionals, we are so engineering from uh, involved with 537 plan for decades. Uh, hold a little closer. Can I uh, There you go. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not used to uh, standing behind the mic, but maybe I'll get the hang of this. But if you can't hear me, just tell me not. I don't have a problem speaking loud, but obviously I have to try and broadcast here. So I'll do my best. Uh, at any rate, uh, thanks for all coming out tonight. Uh, the purpose of this meeting really is to go through the Act 537 sewage planning facility and provide you all with an update on where the township is with the sewage planning. Uh, we just wanted to take you through a couple of slides here and present some facts and findings uh, that we learned along the way. Uh, so we'll talk about the 537 planning process. Um, in fact, let me hit the clicker. Talk about the 537 planning process, uh, the 2019 Pennsylvania DEP order uh, to pursue the, the 537 plan. We'll talk about the NHS progress uh, through the planning. We'll spend a little bit of time focusing on your portability, and then we'll go into the next steps um, that are associated with the 537 plan. 
So, first of all, I don't know. I'm sure people in here are aware of what the 537 plan is. For those of you that don't, it really is um, something that was enacted in 1966 to address existing and uh, future sewage disposal needs. <clears throat> it requires municipalities to develop a plan and regulations for public and private sewage. So the township um, and that, uh, the township started the process of 537 planning uh, probably 2006, I think was the first craft at it. And then 2019, the final plan was submitted at the Pennsylvania DEP for you might ask, what is Pennsylvania DEP? Well, they are the regulatory agency and they oversee all Act 537 planning in the state of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania DEP, by the way, has the ability to either approve or deny a 537 plan. And what we see here is uh, you can see the public sewer area that was proposed and then approved by Pennsylvania DEP. 2019 plan that is still the public sewer area today and we're carrying that forward into uh, the special study which i'll get into in a little bit so 537 plan basically is amended in a couple of different ways it's required to be amended anytime there's new land development that occurs in the township somebody comes in with a commercial establishment residential development they would be required to uh, amend the 537 plan. And you can see uh, that it's amended by a number of different ways. If a developer came in, they would be required to uh, present a planning module and get that approved by Pennsylvania DEP. It's also amended if there's a change in disposal needs in the township. So if all of a sudden, the township realized that there was failed sewer in some other area that weren't previously identified. They would go in and amend that plan uh, to reflect those those needs in the area. So, um, just want to mention that plans may be amended from time to time. Any town, any time the township. Uh, finds that there might be another method, cheaper method to handle and treat the sewage, uh, but they don't always have to be. So it's not a mandate to amend it only if there's new land development where the sewage needs change. So, like I said earlier, it's been a DEP can approve, and they also can deny 537 plan. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind as we walk through this presentation. Uh, Marion Township uh, submitted the Act 537 plan in 2019, and shortly thereafter, there was a consent order that was issued by Pennsylvania DEP because the township didn't completely fulfill and implement the official plan. And the official plan uh, included a public sewer area that was uh, shown on the previous slide. Plus, they uh, they were required to implement a sewage management program for all Ormont systems in the township. And it gave everybody a certain time frame where their Ormont sewage system would need to be pumped and inspected by a qualified individual. The official uh, 2019 sewage facility plan that was approved by the township was for the entire township. It included both the public, public sewer area and all the residents that have one lot systems outside of that public sewer area. And uh, it required the sewer management program. So you all might have heard uh, and gotten a letter regarding the sewer management program for the Walmart system. Again, that requires you to pump 
and some given time frame and pumping needs to be uh, completed and observed by a qualified individual. Right now, uh, pumpers can come out and, and do that, do that pumping service and submit the forms. Little struggle here. I've got glasses on, trying to see the folks out there and read what's on the text. Um, the 2019 plan uh, approved a gravity sewer and public sewer system, right? So uh, the homes in Stroudsburg and all the way down to the canal <clears throat> towards Walmart were, uh, were required to connect. And the proposed plan was a series of gravity sewer pipes and a municipal pumping station down along Canal Road that then would lift the sewage up into the most sewer, sewer system. Yeah. So uh, when the township brought hydrocarbon, we took a look at the 2019 plan, and there were some things in there that we were concerned with. Uh, so we took a couple steps to uh, clarify some of the issues and uh, try and better estimate what the cost might be and the number of homes and connections that would be required for the 537 plan. We completed an EDU analysis which basically included a, a drive-through of, of your community. We counted the number of homes from, a, from the car. We also used GIS and other information to try and quantify how many homes were in there. But we also had to understand how many EDUs would be involved. Everybody knows what an EDU is, right? <laughs> no, okay. Uh, an EDU is an equivalent dwelling unit that we use in sewer terms. It basically means one residential home. So, uh, and it standardizes around some number. Generally, it's 200, 250 gallons a day uh, that just the average home would dispose of into the sewer system. However, there are many municipalities that have a quite a variety of homes and commercial resident, commercial establishments there. Uh, so we had to go back in and look at some of these commercial establishments and guess how many equivalent dwelling units they might be discharged. So if you have a hotel that has 60 rooms, of course that's not going to discharge one EDU, it might be five, 10, it all depends on you know, how it's calculated and what records are available. At any rate, so we went through this EDU evaluation and we came up with the total number of EDUs that we thought uh, should be considered through a design. <clears throat> so the number of EDUs that we came up with is essentially 300. 300 EDUs. Now that's considerably more than the number of units that have been the public sewer, uh, but it's about 10% more to allow for some growth uh, one way or another in, in, the, uh, in the area. Along the way, the township applied for a grant in 2022. I'm sure a part of preparing that grant for the township. And what that did, it, it, it was, what that did is it was a, it allowed the township to go in and further study uh, the area without without them having to pay the cost of it. So it was funded by the yeah, DCED, and it allowed us to go in and do this evaluation. It also allowed us to go in and do a, a, a geological evaluation along the sewer. So there were a number of Warnings that the, the geologists did along the canal. You may have seen them out there last summer, and uh, I think there was 30 some warnings that were taken along the route. And uh, quite honestly, we found out that there, there was significant rock in the area. Um, many of you might know that. 
or do a gardening or whatever, so we can dig a basin, basement in your area. But the first geology out there is such that this rock formation creates benefits along the way. So there's hills and there's valleys underneath the topsoil. And when somebody's coming down there with an excavator, they're going to run into this rock and it's going to create problems for the excavation. And then we drive them the cost up. Uh, we found rock anywhere from two feet deep to 10 feet deep along most of the sewer route. Um, and as I said, the public sewer concept back then, under the originally submitted 2015 plan, was for a gravity sewer system. And we all know that for gravity to work, it's got to run down the hill. So essentially, as it got closer to the disposal point, Sewers got deeper and deeper. I believe there were areas where we're 15, 20 feet in the ground to be able to convey that raw sewage by gravity to the pump station. Ultimately, that rock has, has driven the cost up significantly. Um, let's see. So at that point, we talked to the supervisors and we felt like maybe it was a better way to go about it. Um, there's not going to be a cheap solution for this township, that's for sure, because of the rock, because of the distance that uh, most of the sewers coming from Stoutsburg is trying to get into the point of discharge and home store. Um, so anyway, the township went, went ahead and tried to move forward towards compliance and um, we identified a couple of grant opportunities along the way like i said the 2020 the town 2022 thank you uh a grant was awarded to the township to complete the design and be able to go in and do a little bit of evaluation uh, we recently submitted another grant to complete the design study and uh, there will be some survey to follow with that but it's taken a lot of the cost off of you, taxpayers, township, and you know, the state is helping to pay for some of that cost. As we move through this, this whole thing, the township's really been a key part of developing relations, relationships with outside agencies, uh, county representatives, state representatives, and trying to build a uh, report with them so that future grants may be available to help offset some of the costs. I like that for you, user error. <laughs> okay. No. So now we're coming into present day, and it's sort of a history lesson there, but uh, in 2023, we started working with a special study. If you remember a couple slides back, that is one vehicle that will allow us to update the 537 plan. That was done uh, because we identified another method. And that method is uh, a low pressure system. And uh, we felt that the low pressure system will allow us to do a couple of different things. Obviously with a pressurized sewer, we don't need to be concerned with gravity going down uh, the Connecticut The pressure system can pump up over hills. The depths can be three to four feet deep, continuously along the route. And the, the diameter of the sewer pipe is not eight or 10 inches, it's an inch and a half, two inch, three, maybe four inches of diameter. Low pressure sewer system requires that homeowners have a gravity and have a grinder pump installed, which is a mechanical piece of equipment. And uh, there's been a lot of opposition to low pressure grinders in the past. Um, but uh, I'd say 20 years ago, there was a lot of opposition. But as these things became more frequently used, they realized that the light. The life cycle is probably about 20 years. Uh, there's arguments about the amount of electricity they use. 
studies show about $24 a year operate a low pressure grinder system for one ADU or one, excuse me. I didn't have the bike in my building in my room there. <laughs> Unfortunately, the allergies are kicking my butt right now. At any rate, so we started. Uh, we started the study, realizing that there has to be a better way to, to get sewer to you all. It has to be a cheaper way to do it. And when we went through the evaluation, we identified uh, the low pressure system as the way to go through this. Do you? Think back to the 2019 plan with <clears throat> gravity sewers and pump stations. We estimated about $15 million to complete that with all the rock that's involved. So, <clears throat> as we went through the low pressure sewer system, um, we felt that the price was probably around $11 million instead of $15 million. Now, I know that's not a big, <clears throat> that's not a big reduction in price, uh, but it still is much more worthwhile than trying to put a gravity sewer system in. Um, and, and our estimates are only as good as the information we got. So we don't do much rock on the fee out there. We have some test stories, but they're pretty sparse. We don't know where we might run into a pinnacle where the rock might not be able to be excavated, where there might need, be a need for some dynamite along the way. To, to remove the rock. So the low pressure sewer system really is a better method for this community because the diameter of light is much smaller and because the depth of the sewer is greatly reduced. There also is no need to have a municipal pump station that would probably cost in, uh, in upwards of a million dollars, 500,000 or a million dollars to construct. So that's that's the uh, that's the special study that was completed for the low pressure system. I just wanted to touch a little bit on the one lot sewage management program uh, that is required for all homes in the township now that are operating in a disposal system. A part of the uh, order that the EP issued was that the transfer had to implement this sewer management program and require everybody to have their system pumped and observed over a certain period of time. I think it's four years, I believe it's been four years. Uh, there were some small changes made to help reduce the administrative cost of the sewer management program. Uh, the township uh, voted to use some software and now registered pumpers to come out and do the one lot pumping and service for each and every homeowner when prior, prior to that it required that a professional sewage enforcement officer would have to come out to your site and of course you know professionals they want to get paid accordingly so it drove the cost up so there was a revision done for the sewer management program and i believe that you know at this point Everybody's gotten a letter to some point about, about the, the maintenance of your own lot system, and that puts us in compliance with Pennsylvania DEP. Public sewer is still an outstanding issue. And uh, based on that, we have you know some steps here that uh, that we're trying to move on from the left of the, the slide to the right. Uh, we talked about the grant that was applied for and obtained in 2022 to help reduce the cost of the design. We talked about the additional grant that grant application that was originally submitted just, just this year, and uh, that will also help bring down the cost. Um, so right now we are at the point of addressing the special study comments. So once we get through this tonight's meeting, the board here will have the 
uh, option of approving or entertaining the plan, rejecting the plan, rather. And at that point, uh, it would get submitted to the DUP if it was approved for their consideration. Again, remember that that's the DEP can either approve a plan or deny a plan. And we're not certain what will happen when we submit the 537 plan special study, but uh, we do, we do, we're very hopeful that it'll get approved. And I think as I'm speaking here, I recall that there's something that I missed. And I think. Go back to that slide again about the uh, special study there. <clears throat> So I know you're all a little bit concerned about the 11, 12 million dollars that somebody might be asking you to pay. I know I would be, but uh, when we wrote the 537 plan, um, we looked at uh, we looked at the costs and we figured, you know, what would be a typical cost that a homeowner should be expected to pay for the homeowner system. I estimated that about twenty thousand dollars. Understand. I'm not saying everybody can afford it, but I can tell you that online systems are not cheap. Probably going to pay pretty penny to get a brand new online system. At any rate, we wrote the 537 plan considering that $20,000 sweet spot. And if you look at the bullet number two up there, feasibility requires, can everybody see that? Yeah. Feasibility requires grants to reduce the overall cost of the system. So, if you had a chance to read the special study, it basically says this project is feasible only if there's an $8 million grant that's going to be awarded to the township. So um, I think that you know, the township's headed in the right direction. I felt like the previous Act 537 plan selected the wrong technology for you all mostly because of the rock and the distance, but also the costs that were proposed back then were expensive as well. So we, Kimberly and I, are in a process of identifying additional grants for the township. Our goal is to get the low pressure sewer system designed and being, re being shovel ready, because most of the grants that are out there right now require a project that is ready to be built. Townships and other municipalities are receiving millions of dollars in grants to help with certain improvements. I know this doesn't go over well with everybody, but if we could get a letter of support for everybody in this room, suggesting that they go through with the special study and be aware that the special study only sees it feasible if there's an $8 million grant, we might be able to get somebody to listen to you all. And that's the way to reduce the cost. I understand the twenty thousand dollars is not chunky by any stretch, but if you talk to your pumper and you ask him what a new system would cost you, if you even have room for a new system, it's got to be more than ten thousand. It might be less than thirty. Um, think of that. I think of that. We'll hand it over to. Um, I do want to say a couple of things. So, first and foremost, for those of you who have been following this over the past for years, some of the changes that we have in this special study are what I was trying to get, what I was kind of out of. There is stronger language about financial feasibility. Unfortunately, by the nature of the situation that we're in, it's not a simple matter of us saying no, no one that, that isn't an option. Um, by putting in the language kind of there, we're stressing that this is not something that can be done unless we have adequate funding. Full stop. If we can't afford it, we can't do it. And unfortunately, in my personal opinion, I'm over speaking for the solicitor who's sitting next to me, but there's two times when you're, you're effectively really able to, to enter the negotiating table. Once before you put the plan in and it's approved. And you're now legally required to be what's in that plan. And once before you actually put it in the ground. 
if we don't have the funding, we simply have to, to fight that battle at that point. In the time being, we are legally obligated by the state of Pennsylvania to meet the milestones that are in that plan. If we do not, the department has made it very clear that they would take action against us. And that action includes a minimum fine of $300 a day at their discretion. Good evening, every, good evening, everyone. My name is Colin. I'm the township solicitor. I know that Joe just threw a lot of information at you, but we should open quickly summarize it. The, the, the long story short here, for people who aren't aware, is that the township has been mandating by law from the, from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection to, to uh, create and construct a public sewer system that it starts from Southbrook. To do that, you have to create what's called an Act 537 plan. As Joe referenced, our Act 537 plan currently contemplates a gravity system. For many different reasons, Joe's team thinks that that is not in the township's best interest, primarily due to the cost. The cost is not $15 million, most of which is because it requires, excuse my language, ship and flow downhill. Right? It requires high points in the township from the low points. But to get to the low point, which is the treatment plant in almost the work, you have to potentially last your way through 10 or 15 feet of rock. Okay? So the, the goal of the special study is to support an amendment to the Act 537 plan. At the end of last year, or even maybe before that, we approached the DEP about amending the Act 537 plan. And they said the way to do that is through a special study. The special study concludes that the, the best way for the township to implement public sewer is through a low pressure system because it would be significantly less money. The, where we are right now is in the public comment <coughs> period of the special study. Okay, so we're here to take your feedback specifically, hopefully, as it relates to the special study and amending the Act 537 plan. Because ultimately, the amendment from a gravity system to a low pressure system cannot be done without the approval of the DEP. And again, after tonight, after the public comment period ends, we anticipate submitting this special study to the DEP to support the amendment. If the amendment is approved by the DP, we can then go get, hopefully, grants to fund this extremely expensive project. At this time, I'll open the floor for public comment. Uh, once again, we ask that if you are going to speak, then just sign in the front of the room and then clearly state your name and address to the mic from the center for the record. And please be mindful, we could please observe the five minutes of time frame here. Judge is going to be keeping track of that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, most people find that they want to bring person. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna after this gentleman, we're gonna go in order on the list. So we ask that if you would like to sign in to, to speak, please come around and, and do so. Uh, that way we can keep this nice or messy. Yes, sir. After you. Testing. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you can be familiar with. Uh, so, 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 name and address, please. Name and address. Uh, name and address. Charles Wissinger, 449 Sharon Road. Okay. Right yeah. Uh, recently, well, not recently. I worked up in uh, Strauss Town where they put in a sewer system and they forced that down their throat. And uh, now it's costing them $120 a month for sewer. And they said it will never be paid off. That's what they're up against. 
with the uh, state running this down your throat. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, Peter and uh, Eileen, I don't know, I think you got this letter from Bob. It means Irene. Uh, Irene, Eileen's your tax collector. Irene. Uh, you know, when you were, uh, said he wouldn't be able to make a meeting tonight and is scheduled for this evening because he had a prior commitment. I just found out about 15 minutes ago. So, my thoughts and comments, which will forward to CAGE members. I'm reading to all of you CAGE members. Peter and Irene, you were elected for a specific charge of pulling back the plan and fighting public sore. The department is a corrupt organization that suffers from extensive bureaucratic overreach. There is nothing in Act 537 that requires public sore and the DEP has no power to enforce public sore on people that do not wish it unless there is a cost benefit analysis, i.e. public sore versus on lot that weighs heavily in favor of public sewer. There's no such cost uh, benefit analysis. And the comments that I submit a few years ago, it showed quite the contrary. You hide behind the fact that Wallace and Troutman, two persons with ulterior motives, submitted a plan despite responding 105 written comments that were submitted in opposition to the plan. Furthermore, you continue to work with an attorney that does not, or that is at the root cause of the problem, understanding the issues in total and will not fight for the people. He has only fought against the people from the beginning. So we have a situation Oh, yeah, yeah. So we have a situation where unelected bureaucrats over interpreting Act 537 beyond the legislative intent, and they were coerced electric or er, elected township officials to tax their citizens. Those citizens remain in opposition to such taxation. So while you were, so, so while your low pressure opinion is uh, far better than the unnecessary, it won't take a 100% grant order in order to remove the opposition to public sewer. Now, speaking for myself, I've lived at my residence for 30 years. I have a 1,000 gallon, a 500 gallon, and a 250 gallon pumping station. I've cleaned it out every three years. I haven't had a problem. I have 2.91 acres, and I can't see running a sewer system down my throat because I don't want it and I don't need it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, next, Bryce, would you reverse the sign in? Please come up and uh, make your public comment. I'd like to say, first of all, the sound system is pathetic. We cannot hear back there. Secondly, I read somewhere. What? Just please. What? My name is Bryce Stanley. I live at 10 Main Street in Stoutsburg. Is that clear? Yes. I read somewhere that engineers like to fix things that are not broken. Excuse me. Excuse me. If I was an engineer, Bryce. You, I know you were saying that people can't hear in the back, but you are 
Really mad. No, and they can hear me back there. Yeah. I, 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 I would like to say if I was an engineer, I would take offense, but I am not an engineer. But I am a resident of this community, and I would like to know why we are trying to fix something that is not broken. Are there any on lot problems in the community? Yes or no, Ms. Selesky? Yes. Tell me about it. Yes, there are. Because this is what part of the Act 537 is put in place to do. There are many residents who have cesspools. There are many residents who have holding tanks. There are many residents that may have nothing. And so part of the sewer management program is getting every resident to clean out their system, have it inspected, and to make sure that it's functioning properly. This is required under the mandate from the state, not Marion Township, from the state. We are only trying to comply with what the state wants us to do. I would also like to know which of you three supervisors approved to the Department of Environmental Protection that we should proceed with an engineering problem, an engineering solution. Why are we doing this? And, and you asked the question a little bit with regards to dry volume. What? Uh, I'm not sure I followed the question, but you asked the question a slightly different way. I did. And there was a reason for that. I'd like to know why and who. So are you talking about such a study that has- I'm talking been, about right? three supervisors who comply. I saw the word compliance. That yeah. refers to the engineering plan as compliance with the Act 3, 537. But I would like to know who instituted this uh, situation. It's the DED. Put it bluntly, it is the Department of Environmental Protection. So the government is breathing down our necks again. We, yeah. we must submit an updated act by the three seven. You guys. must submit a plan, and it is yes or no. As I recall, a few years ago, it was either yes, we are interested, or no, we are not interested. So, so Bryce, there's, there's a couple things here. The DEP, you can submit whatever you want to the DEP. That doesn't mean that they're going to approve. So the factors that the DEP looks at, because they're they're not unilateral, they're going to push for soon. The situation that we have is there are so many properties along Main Street that are less than a half an acre, quarter acre, or third an acre, that when the DEP looks at this, it says you could have a malfunction, you could have a failure, you don't have any alternate system other than holding a tank. That doesn't mean there is a failure. We, you know that there are a couple on Main Street that do have some problems historically. There are ones that have holding tanks, which is a very expensive, long term, I wouldn't even call it a solution, but a solution for that problem. And the BEP says you are not allowed to do X, Y, and Z. So while they cannot specifically say you must do sewer, they can say you can't do the following, which leaves this option. And unfortunately, back in 2019, when, as Bob put it, the other two supervisors submitted the plan, I voted no because I did not like the contents of the plan then, and I don't like the contents of the plan now, which is why we are undergoing this special step. This is something that, unfortunately, saying no, we don't want it, isn't going to fly. The state is not going to let us do that. And we don't want to enter into a situation where, like Robinson Township, who did submit a plan and then didn't act on it, the DEP came in and they constructed it at their what they wanted to go for they basically didn't check. And I don't mean they gave me grants, I mean they they wouldn't build. Robinson had to figure out how to pay for it. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Next up. Uh, next up. No, it's it says it's on. Hold on. Check one, two, check one, two. Here. Sure. Thank you. Okay, that, I know that works. Um, next up, um, I apologize. I, uh, this one. Al, okay. Uh, Al, I had a hard time reading your name there, Al. Al, you're next. Sure, know my name. Why not? Oh, I, don't, I know your name, but please observe the, the formality. My name is Albert Ferrandino. I live in 55 Main Street, Stocksburg. A little bit loud. There you go. That's one. That's one. 
Yeah. But yeah. first of all, I want to say thank you for you guys to show up to the latest noise. Noise. Anyway, it was brought up about a whole lot. That the uh, whole lot matter if your septic system goes bad, you don't have enough space. That is a lot. We go back to grandfather clause and it taught you they replace the, 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 the system. It's in the way it is now, you put a new system in there. So when they say about no, it's not big enough lot to, 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 to put a new septic in. No, that's not true. So, so I'll not, not to cut you off, but I feel the need to, to correct right. something here. So the, the plan says that you can replace your best technical guidance. However, that still has to be approved by the DEP. Any of the sewage permits that you get, whether it's for a new system or replacement or update or modification, has to be approved by the department. And to put it bluntly, if you try to put a, a septic system or a sand mount on a quarter acre or a third of an acre, they just simply won't approve it. Oh, so so where are the grandfather folks? So yes. this, this is something that I, I have done an extensive amount of looking into, and I'm by no means an attorney, but there have been a number of court cases that have decided that the department is the sole uh, authority interpreting the regulations. There was one that was uh, Carroll Township versus the Commonwealth for the, the Delaware River Keepers, and there was another situation similar in Max and Tawani where that exact thing was decided, that grandfather means exactly what the department decides that it means. So if you, it means one thing to you and I, if it means something to the DEP, unfortunately, that's what we'll tell. I mean, when you say something, it's got to be exactly what it is. So how can anybody else say, no, that's not true? When, when, when you go back to the grandfather clause, it says just the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, how many people here uh, are on the fixed income? Put your hands up. <laughs> Holy shit, you better sell your house now because they're going to take it. So, uh, so the other issue is not only the land area that, that might be restricted to those homes that are in Shoutsburg, but there's no public water in the village either. So then you have wells that are very close to failing system or a system that might have a, a uh, malfunction of some sort. And I don't know what the depth of the wells are, but I have to tell you, if I was drinking out of a well and I knew that there was sewage running on the surface next to where I'd be really concerned. Why that so? They just finish a second. So when they say grandfather, as Peter said, Best available technology. The uh, SEO would never allow you to come in if the place a cesspool, but it's not a cesspool. It has to be a septic system and some sort of one lot disposal system. And that's where, when you're looking at one third of an acre or half an acre, there's not a lot of room. And based on the number of garages and sheds that are out there, we're talking about a very small uh, amount of area. So, okay, uh, so let's just ask if you can explain the cesspool. So, for those of you that don't know, septic system or septic tank is a solid tank and it has two baffles or has a number of baffles in there. It has one coming in on the inside and one that's going on the outside. Prevents solids from that, cess that septic tank from going out into the disposal field. Cesspool is completely different. Cesspool was generally built out a lot or some other time. Wastewater goes in there, and then the water just leaches out into the groundwater. There is no prevention of solids from going into the groundwater. And the solids are what plug up the soil. So the soil has a regenerative component to it where it'll help treat the wastewater before it gets to the groundwater. You have a cesspool and you plug up your soils outside of it, it has nothing else to do but find the easiest course that might be onto the surface or into the neighbor's well. So it's not just 
The grandfather issue, there is definitely a space problem, but also the wells definitely need to be considered. If that comes to a case like that, that the, the, the water goes on top of the ground, well, then they got to fix the septic system. Pardon me? They got to fix it. Yes. Yes. Well, what they're saying, what they're saying is they can't surround. You know, the situation where homeowners would either have to put in a only tank, which has a lot of the same construction costs as a septic system. They're, they're not cheap. And then you have a probably two to four hundred dollar plug. That situation we have. The thing, the thing is, why everybody's got to be well, for one or two houses that got problems? So it's not going to be one or two houses in all actuality. So, you know, are these people here can't afford it? I can't afford it. I'm not a fair So, now I have three kids. I'm right there with you. Oh, fine. You make, more, you make more money than I do. This is probably true, but the, the, the underlying fact remains I don't want to have to do this either, but the reality of it is. The state is requiring it, and you have my personal state. Why, why don't we go after the EP and tell them where it is? The two, the three supervisors that put that plan in, they were not in the right mind. So they were, Peter Wallace was so freaking angry in the township, they didn't even know if he was coming or going. So, uh, so yeah, so. Opinions of the former supervisors aside, this no, is no, wait, wait. Right. Uh, Trotman, he didn't even know he was at the meeting. He was every time he didn't know I was at the meeting, he was so sick. Can't blame the guy, he's sick, he's sick. Yeah. We're, we're, not, we're not getting into that. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're not getting into that. how's the plan getting there? I'm, ta I'm telling you, so, I'm telling you. Well, so, so now the brass tax of this is. Franklin Trotman and Peter Walls. Uh, I think the meeting in December 2019 voted to put it in. Okay. Yeah. But they, they were so mad, so angry to the township here, to these people here, that they it, it, did it on purpose. It's Alan. unfortunately, we can't change it. Alan, so, Alan, yeah. I'm sorry, Alan, your time is up. Five minutes. <laughs> we did, and we, we did it time. Time. Yeah. 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 Just, a, just a quick question. Um, if we were to find a home where the system was functioning and the homeowner did repair it, would that person have to evacuate the premises or would it have to be condemned? So if they had a non-functioning system, so let's say we, we, there's a property in town, you go in, we, they do the inspection, it's not functioning, they can't repair it, what's your repair, what happens to that residence? It's, well, so it could be condemned, but property could be condemned, but uh, there also is the option to put a in until the problem is you just can't contaminate the wells. That's the that's the big problem here. Uh, and honestly, some people might say, well, bring public water in, but that is going to have a similar kind of price. Right. That's, that's not that's all that's what you have. And for those people to fix income, this is why we're here. This is why we're doing everything that we're doing here. We as it generally improves it to because of the financial costs. I know there's individuals that do support it, but we don't have a choice in this matter anymore. We are doing our best. We hired the professionals at one of the public meetings. I don't know who, but if any of you guys attended or watched on YouTube, I said, What's the worst case scenario? And they looked at us and said, You guys are. We are their worst case scenario. These are professional sanitation engineers. This is what they do every single day. And we have to take their advice and, and do what they ask us to do because they're giving us their best guidance because they have done this over and over and over again. They have worked with multiple townships, municipalities, etc., and implemented plans. We can say that they're our only hope. We're not here to begrudge any of you in the audience. We're not here to make you feel bad. We're here to give you information. But at the same time, we also need your help. We don't have a choice in this. Our options are to do nothing and face a minimum fine of $300 a day. That's just a little under $110,000 a year. Again, if any of you are at the budget meetings, we function off of $600,000 a year. It's not what we want to be facing. We have multiple projects, we have multiple issues in this town. This is something that we have to comply with, but we also need your help. If any of you are willing to provide a letter of support, as Kimberly had mentioned earlier, this helps us. 
We know that you're on a fixed income. If you want to gather the signatures, if you want to write the letter and say, hey, we're on a fixed income, we can't afford this. This helps us. This helps to support us in getting grants and getting funding. This helps us to give Hydra Terra, both Kim and, and Joe here, the support that they need to move forward. It's one thing for us to say, hey, we have a financial problem in our budget. It's another thing to hear from you guys, from the residents, and this is what we want. This is, we, we want your help too, because it affects us as well. None of us want to raise taxes. None of, none of us want to have to pay any, anything extra, but we don't have a choice. Trust me, we have gone over this again and again and again and again, and we are trying to find the best way to fix this problem. Yeah, the one thing of that is uh, you guys don't necessarily see a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes between meetings for those people who go to meetings. But we've met with state representatives, we've met with other officials, governing bodies, county commissioners. We're exploring literally every avenue that we possibly can for grants. Because, like I said earlier, if we do not get the kind of grant money that we need, we can't do it. And that's where push comes to shove. We're not there yet. Right now, we have to comply with what the state has within the rules around the Act 37 plan so that we avoid getting fined. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just please keep in mind that the 537 special study is written that the special study or the, or the, the plan would only be considered if. Uh, it's offset by eight million dollars in grades. So it's the whole thing at least. Yeah. So we're trying to drive that cost down as far as possible. It basically says township cannot afford to build this at $12 million dollars. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so the special study is you do all online and and I'll try to do it online. Uh, it's written with you all in mind, and it was written because we wanted to try and get as much grant funding as humanly possible. So, at a minimum of $8 million, dollars, and we'll get it down to what would be generally considered a reasonable rate. I'm not saying 20000 anybody could get for that, but I'm saying that's a reasonable rate that we think the EP would approve. Okay, 20000 it's not a scare people. That's not a lump sum. That's the cost. It's over the proportion of the operating lifespan. So $25,000 would include the equipment. Yeah. So obviously, there's other hurdles to jump here, but just keep in mind that this is all based on receiving grants, receiving grants of $8 million to help offset the costs. We can't do it without your support. Yes. Uh, next person is Jennifer Miguel. Okay, to start, I know how we got here. It's really the Jennifer Miguel, 51 Main Street. We all know we got here because of gas supervisors. That's why we're here tonight with this plan in place. Kind of screwed us over. Okay, but with tonight's knowledge, listening to you guys speak and telling us more information, I have a couple of questions for you. To start off, the EDU that you did, did you base this off of addresses? When you did the EDU, when you went through to say, okay, we have this house, this house, this house. Did you base your EDU off of, like, my house is 51 and 53 main? Did you base that off of 51 is one and 53 is one? Or because there are a lot of duplexes in this town that are now single homes, and you can't base it off of that's two houses, it's one. It was based on uh, both the drive through the township, but we also looked at uh, tax records and, and other information would have been available uh, publicly. Okay. So with this EDU, when the sewer would come through, if we ever get to this point, we're trying to get away from this point, as you understand. But if it would come through, 
How are these people that have two, like me, 51 and 53? We connect your one house. One connect, one house. We connect as one home. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. That's what I wanted to hear. But here's the next question. The grinders you were speaking about, how many grinders? Is that per house? Or is that per square area? How many grinders are on one house? It's, it's, like, it's like a well pump. Think about it. Now. So everybody would have to have their specific grinder. Correct. Yes. And we only pay for that electric bill ourselves. That's correct. So who's paying for the grinder? Are we paying for the grinder to put in? That would be included in that figure that I shared with your owner. The 11 million. Well, it would be included in the 11 million. But when with the raise with the raise involved, this is what's bringing it down to the twenty thousand dollar figure. But that would include all the equipment, your grinder pump, your low pressure sewer connection, and the low pressure system to get into the point of discharge. Who pays for us to have all the equipment done in our houses? That would be part of that. Yes, that's, that's part of that that twenty thousand dollar figure. Second, so. Jen, in the, the normal Act 537, so I know this is something that I had talked about previously many times. There are things that the department doesn't necessarily consider. But we tasked Ivan Tara with looking at this. I wanted them to give us a holistic figure of what the actual impacts to a household would be, not just here's the project cost, here's the tapping fee. I wanted to know here's what the average household is going to look at. We have the, the actual project itself, we have tapping the, uh, the, the cost of having the connection pointed so that it's not going back into your yard and the tank, but going down to the street or having to put the pump in. This is as, as real world as we can possibly get on comparison. And the, the next step is to look at if you had to replace a system in that hypothetical scenario, would it, or I shouldn't say would it, but where one cost benefit her would it hit for I have to spend twenty thousand dollars on a new setting system assuming you can do it versus I could spend twenty thousand dollars prorated over 20 years how much is that a month where does it actually drive yeah. so real quick if I do the sewer and you hang on to the message before I forget my question yeah. um if it comes down to the twenty thousand there over 20 years I turn around and sell my house two years later that stays in the house so the next person has to pay it it's like it's almost it's a, it's essentially attached to the, the property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you were to sell the house, that that, that well, would right to discharge to it. Okay, we get past the new one. Could hurt any one of you who wants to sell your home because there's going to be a lot of people when they see this involved in a contract to sale that they are going to incur this. It could weigh them not to buy your home. I work in real estate. I know this. Yeah, I mean honestly. My opinion is public storage is going to increase the value of your home, not decrease it, unless of course you're in some ways longer moving. But anyway, I wanted to get into the twenty thousand dollar figure that we were talking about. So that is really the total. Let me get away from the twenty thousand, the eleven million dollars. That's the total cost of constructing the system. But it also includes the tapping fee that's being charged by the Walmart store sewer company to take your system, to take that wastewater in for treatment. All right, so there's, it's not $11 million just in construction costs, but there are connection fees or what they call tapping fees that would need to be paid. Is there, they're currently under the negotiation with the fee agreement. So does that, what, just let me follow up on Joe's point here. But as you know, whenever you tap into the treatment plan, you pay a fee to the sewer authority for treatment, right? So the 20,000, the almost work sewer authority is currently in the process of updating their tapping fee. Okay. That is expected to be about $10,000. The grinder pump is also about $10,000. So if the township gets $8 million in grant funds, the expectation is that the residents will not pay for any of the construction. They're simply paying for the tapping fee to the sewer authority, which anyone owes when they connect with the system, as well as the grinder pump. That would be the $20,000 per household. So you're saying this $20,000 will include somebody to come in and reconstruct my septic in my household, go from the back of my house, 
to the front of my house to the street. I'm not going to have to hire a separate contractor to have all this work done. I'm not going to say you won't, but we'll have a right here. But there's no way I can go in and estimate what it's going to cost to be the public and the private sewer so, because I don't know what's on everybody's property. But with a grinder, you can put that grinder pump wherever you want. And that's the nice part of it is that now it's moving it by pressure into that common low pressure line. So if your septic system's in the back and you're concerned about the cost to relocate it out front, you really shouldn't be because you very could possibly put it exactly where that septic tank is now accessible, whatever you want. Okay, I have a septic tank. Mine was put in 2003, so it's new. With a drainage field and everything, we had top of the line in, the old people put it in for us. However, if I put that grinder in the back, I don't have enough room on either side of my property to run pipe to go to the street out front. So if you're telling me basically I'm going to have to go through my basement to the front, Basically, through my front wall of my house to get out to the street, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just jump in here a little bit because there's, there's a lot of confusion and you know, trying to set the expectation here. You know, so, what Joe's presented is a $20,000 number, but that obviously is subject to change. That can come down if more grant money to receive. Um, and, but what they're saying is the whole plan is based on a minimum of eight million dollars in, in grant money to help bring the cost down, and the result will be a twenty thousand dollar fee to the homeowner for tapping and connection. Um, but that could change. And, and more grants, if we got support letters from everybody and put together, you know, a grant application with a lot of support, might be able to get funding for. Maybe the whole thing. Some of the funding, though, typically requires you know a certain percentage paid by you know the sponsor or the municipality that's asking for the grant. So you know this is all based on you know estimates at this point. The other thing I'll add is the construction costs. However long it takes when we put that shovel in the ground, be it two years, three years, four years, we don't know what inflation is going to do. We don't know what the cost of construction is going to be. So you got to keep that in mind. Nobody has a crystal ball down the road. It'll depend on at the time it's about to bid, what kind of construction costs has been or bids or received from viable contractors. The, the other point I think, you know, with regard to internal uh, plumbing changes, that is typically the responsibility of the homeowner to hire a plumber to make those connections internally. You know, there's no way we can account for having a contractor come in under a general contract that the town is paying for and switch over internal plumbing in 300 homes. Because everybody's gonna want something a little different. So typically that's the way it's done. You are paying, again, $20,000 is just an estimate. It could be less <laughs> and hopefully it will because that's what they're setting up the parameters for. Um, but I don't think that includes Costs for internal plumbing changes in your home. And that's the fee, the privilege to connect to the public system. Again, Woolsdorf Borough, they have a fee to connect in to accept treatment because you're basically paying for that plant that's there. You know, you, you don't get to connect in now for nothing because the plant's there and it's operational. So, you, you know, that's how they come up with the tapping fee, but it costs to build that plant. And at the time you're connecting, here's how they proportion it. This wouldn't be fair to all their customers. All their customers at one point had to pay a tapping fee to connect into a brand new sewer plant. Now they, they're willing, and, and that's a good thing, that we have the ability to connect into that wastewater treatment plant, because otherwise, we'd be building a new wastewater treatment plant just for Marion Township and the cost of double. So, you know, that's, that's a blessing, in my opinion, to keep these costs low. Um, the other thing I, I think, you know, everybody has to understand, you know, sanitation is key for the viability of any community or any society. I mean, if you look back to the Roman, you know, empire, a lot of the, their cities and towns failed because of lack of sanitation, with disease and sickness and whatever. And in Stoutsburg alone, I'm amazed that there hasn't been more problems because I know the houses are right on top of each other. 
And I'm amazed that everybody has an online system and a well. PEP's current requirements are separation distance from a well of 100 feet from any online septic system. You can't make that standard work today, and there is no grandfather. So, you know, this is a, is a, a lifeboat to the community to get proper sanitation and proper sanitary sewer. And the township is doing everything they can to minimize that cost. Please keep in mind that $20,000 increase is, is an estimate. You know, that's, I think that's the max that we're trying to do here. But with your support and help in some of these grant applications, if we get more grants, that cost is going to come down. Because by any grants, we're going to go to the total cost, whatever's left over, that gets divided up. Okay, so. I have a lot more I can go on, but I'll finally wrap it up since I know I have a sign period here. Last question being, if the time comes, and understand that we started at 5 million 10 years ago for this project, went to 15 million to 11 million, my question is, when the time would come if it ever does, what happens if you can only get $2 million worth of grants? Do we have to go somewhere else with this again? We push back, we don't do and they don't do it. As long as I'm on this board, we will do everything in our power to comply with state law. We will not do anything illegal, potentially, for sure, and try to avoid doing anything illegal accidentally, for sure, too. But um, if we can't do it, we don't do it. I don't want to create a ghost town, either for because of sewer going in or sewer not going in. Yeah, that is the final line that we straddle. We don't want to see people have to abandon their homes because they don't have a working sewage system. But we also don't want to see people put out of their homes because they can't afford to put sewer system in. Right. And I get where you're going with the whole study situation. As long as your grants, that's great. That way we're not paying for the study. I just want to make sure that they're getting accurate information so we get accurate information. Yeah, this this was funded entirely by grants. It's just uh, the LSA, the local service grant. Can we? Yes. All right. So in the end result, if there's not enough grant money, we can't do it. We don't do it. Yeah, that's yeah. like I said, there's a time to pick your bites and that I'll turn it over to Rodri, but yeah. as long as I'm saying it on this board, I will not endorse any action that will result in a detriment to detention. Um, yeah, but really, can I just ask you a question? Not to be on the spot, but are there are there uh, loan programs for homeowners? Yes, yep. and this is because I know that you posted on our website too. So I looked at it briefly. If anyone wants to go to the Marion Township website, it's Marion T W E Burks dot com. Okay, and there are there is most of this information is on our website. I mean, if you want to look at it, and I'll I'll hand over to Kimberly. Okay, fantastic. Can everyone hear me? Um, my name is Kimberly. I work with Joe, part of Hydrotera Professionals. Um, one of the things when this system, if it comes to fruition, there is assistance for homeowners facing a tapping gate hooking up to the system. There is a loan program offered by PenVest, and the information is posted on the website. There is also another reason we're pursuing really great relationship with our county and state officials is that there are other avenues to consider low to moderate income residents to maybe get more help than just the loan program that's offered by the state to everyone. And that funnels into having a letter written from your perspective, explaining your family or your individual situation, your income, and why assistance is critical for you. If Joe and I and the entire board of supervisors can submit letters explaining, breaking down, if you feel comfortable sharing your situation, that could open up also towards being considered for a community development block grant where people who are documented and proven as low to moderate income can receive assistance to hook up to the public sewer system that's been installed. There are avenues for exploring every direction to make sure that it is financially feasible. And um, I know I mean all the board of supervisors, Peter, Jesse, Joe, myself, Chuck, will be more than happy to address questions when that time comes or any questions that you have. But um, 
when you think about the potential costs. It's very hard. We're talking you know, numbers that may or may not come to fruition, but there are avenues at every step that we are working to support and make sure that we are A, complying with the state, but also keeping your best interests in mind at the forefront. Just to add to that, you can be 100% against this whole thing. I don't know where you are. That's fine. What you can do is you can still write a letter of support. You can voice your dissatisfaction of having to do the public sort. Basically, say something to the effect of if we're forced to do it, the only way that we can do it is with sufficient grant funding because, and then explain a little bit about your situation. You could be on fixed income, hired, be at work, be on long term disability, it doesn't matter. You can put that in the letter. It doesn't have to be a glowing recommendation for sewer. It can be a simple statement of facts. I don't like this. I don't agree with it. However, if it has to be done, the only way it's going to be feasible is if we get kind of grant assistance that would make it possible. Because, like myself, there are many other people in the same situation. And we implore you again, this, this is a huge, huge help to us as we try to chase that grant funding. So if you are so inclined, please write that letter, address it to the board of supervisors, and the office is open Monday through Friday, uh, nine to two. I'm sure we're all off there. And then again, your your help on this, I won't even say support, but your help on this is what is going to make our, our ability to, to navigate this unfortunate and complicated situation possible. Okay, uh, next we have uh, Todd Rick. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, Todd Crick, 144 Main Street. Can you hear me? Can you turn it off? Turn off. Uh, there's a circle inside. That's Todd Crick, 144 Main Street. Um, I have a few questions as well. Um, first, we said that about public water. So the whole thing for this whole sewer was because people's wells were contaminated. I was one of the wells that was contaminated. A couple of years ago, uh, we had a water buffalo out in front of my house because my well was contaminated by runoff. So, what's going to happen to the wells when we get sewer? Does anybody know? So, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the engineer speaking purely as a high level, whether it's um, the leaching or runoff or whatever. Yeah. If you're introducing less contaminants into the ground. The groundwater is by virtue of that going to get that. Okay. If you, you have other sources of pollution like agriculture. Okay, I only have five minutes, so. Yeah, no, no, it's a big big We're not going to this against you. Uh, um, but if you have other sources, that's not going to go away, but conceivably, groundwater is going to be better as a result of that. You hope. You hope. It's, it, because it, you if you're not adding the pollution you never into the ground, you know, it may take time for that to be in all yeah. of so we, can, we can we can predict how each well is going to respond once the pollution is no longer being introduced. Right. And we also can't predict what inflow in, inflow and infiltration will do to the pipes in the in the street. Okay. So, so we're going um, three foot, we're going three foot deep with sewer. How do you know that the sewer pipes ain't gonna crack and get into the wells? So that's right? that's a risk that you want. That's the risk we're taking. Low rent. Yeah, I mean, it, it, some happens. I'll let Joe answer. But. Um, so, this infrastructure has been for a number of years. Uh, gravity sewers are actually more to ion than a pressure sewer system. Okay, ionized inflow and infiltration. For those of you that don't know, obviously, the um, gentleman here knows what ion is. Uh, but so, inflow is coming from the surface. Entering typically a manhole or broken clean out, which could be impacting everybody's online system. If you have clean out that's cut flush with grade and you're, you blow right over it, and when it rains, you probably have some surface water entering. Infiltration is going into a broken pipe. When you have a pressure sewer system, generally the pipes don't break. Say they never do, but the technology's been out there for a number of years, and these pipes should exist for you know 50, 100 years. So, so I don't think that's an issue. But getting back to the contamination part, um, 
So the longer you contaminate the soil, the more time it's going to take to correct. If you don't do something with your public system, the wells are only going to get worse. Okay, so the town has existed since the 1800s, and everyone that hears it is like pretty old. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how a new public sewer is going to make the health of our town better. If you look around here, we're only drinking well water, not dying off. So I'm confused. Personally, I'm voting against this plan, and I don't know how you're going to enforce someone not paying their sewer bill. Because we're going to get a bill every month. You're going to have no public water. You're not going to be able to enforce them from not paying their bill. How are you going to do that? How are you going to have someone so pay their municipal maintenance law? Okay. When someone doesn't pay the utility bill, that's sent by the township. The board authorizes my office to file a municipal lien claim. Okay. That outstanding balance is then satisfied when the property owner goes to sell the property. So you're going to just put a lien if they don't pay the bill? Yes. What about the monthly bill? You don't shut their service off because you can't do that, right? No. Okay. Okay. So what, 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 what can happen, however, is that the township can alert, well, there's no, there's no public law. So, no. Hey, you'll get out, turn their water off to enforce them not paying your sewer bill. Now, I know most of the people in here are beautiful, beautiful people, they're lovely, they're dear, they're wonderful, but here's the thing they are going to move, and there are going to be different people coming into the township. So you're going to get some people who aren't going to pay their bill. So how are you going to enforce that? We have no plan. There's nothing in the plan that's going to enforce this. But months and months of bills not being paid. Taxes are going to go up in our township. And then you say about property values are going to go up. And I know, just for what I know, once our property values go up, you're going to reassess our property. And that's going to mean that our taxes are well, and we all know that taxation is that's, yeah. that's the so, county. Yeah, that's the township. You're going to put town, yeah, township down. Well, you know what's going to be. And as far as the pipe dream and the price going down, there's a lot. So, yeah, that's all I think. Mean. Yeah. Thank you. So, so, do you know how much the county has to pay in a couple of local business uh, individuals. And the biggest problem is our lack of sewer. Uh, lack of water is a problem too, but because we are not mandated to do water, we're not doing water because of the cost of not doing water. Trust me, again, we hear you, we feel you. We don't want to do this, but we don't have a choice. And I guess, you know, I love the same when I was sitting in your seats. Now I'm sitting in this seat and I have all the information that I know, and I still have to go forward and comply. It's, it's one thing sitting on that end of it. It's another thing sitting here, having read through all the court cases that we went through, having read through all the court cases that other townships have faced. We can go ahead and use Google Scholar and then Google it yourself. This is a nasty process if we don't perform. Next up is Tom um, Embryani. I made my right is anything other than other glory. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Rubin. Told me to pick up 146 Main Street, South Square. Most of you know me. I was a supervisor for 16 and a quarter years. I should have finished out at 19 and a quarter, but I ended up having a stroke where I would have been fought the battle for you guys. But I've been in their shoes. I know exactly what they're going through. It's not easy. The DEP is going to get it. It's, it's, they got you by the short hairs. They came up with that in 1966 when I was in the last. Um, uh, 537 plan we had was 1971. Prior to this, I think it was now 2019. Um, 
it's not easy. They're not in a good place up here either. I've been on that side of the table. Um, most of you know me. I try to live in the township since all my life. But um, it's it's not easy. I'm glad to hear that they are pursuing it with the stipulation that the grant monies are going to be there or we're not going forward. I think that's 100% um, the way to go to help people fight. It is to sit here and say that some don't have problems or are. I've been, I've been to places that I was a supervisor. I had to go out and see the, the, the homes that don't have the qualifying systems. And I had to sit up there and try and comfort the ones that didn't need it to the ones that do need it. It's a tough situation. Um, I've been there. Um, it's not easy. However, the only thing I'm going to ask the board, you, you estimate 380 years. Do you currently know how many are in Stonecroft? Okay. So, Stonecroft is actually moved up separately. So they're they're not currently not how many are in Stonecroft. There's what 200 houses? Yeah, there are 1,414 houses. When I was pursuing the 537 before I had my stroke, I had promised the guys, my constituents, that when we get to paying the bill, whether it was hooked up, we knew this was coming or it's going to be shut down their throats. Um, the only thing that I tried to ease it so that you aren't looking at just 300 coming in. You actually had 500 now and 14. And I would ask that that's what you would be at the billing cycle, that all 500 not split it for 300. Your married times, we're not just a, we are married times, and that includes the, the country. The most, I look around the audience, there's a lot of country folk here tonight. You gotta understand that the state has also adopted the old system. That means everybody in the state pumping their, supposed to be pumping their system every three years. It's just, it's just not married township, that's the state. But I would ask that the board would consider, as I, what I'm willing to do, was when we finally go into this monthly billing cycle, if that's what happens, the normal sort, that it would be considered 500, not 300, because we're all paying mostly. I know you do now. Yes, so but as it goes up for Marion Township, that is 500, not 300. The solicitor and I have attended a couple of us in sewer authority meetings, and uh, there is an agreement in place right now. Uh, we're trying to converge to the sewer authority to consider her, but there's some amendments to that agreement that will allow us to be donated as a bulk user from the township. And that would effectively help spread the cost out across five folks instead of three. That's all that's already a work in progress. You see the pushback we get here from the current people that are using it. See that that's the same people that are also they gotta understand also that the other people that don't have it all are being forced to do it. We gotta split the spread the, the cost. So 380 use in Scouts Pro. Yep. 214 in Stone Pro. That's the five referring to. So that bulk sewer rate would be based on those folks that are in the, the current public sewer area plus the stone crop would help alleviate some of the costs. So, yeah. we'll have that okay. so just just because uh, this is a very confusing topic in process, this is not a situation where the folks in stone crop are going to see a change in billing. You guys already have a super you, what would be happening here is this is the equivalent of if you go to buy, say, three candy bars, super it costs $1.50 or 50 cents a piece. You go to buy five, and they're now suddenly less money because you're buying the a higher quantity of candy bars. It's the economy of scale. So, second class township code actually prohibits uh, the billing of an infrastructure project like this to uh, residences that are not involved in that project. So, the actual cost. Cannot be distributed out to residents of Stonecrop because they're not benefiting. No, no, not any of that eleven. However, and this is this is where it, it, it can get confusing. It's not a situation where you're being billed as part of the project. You're being included as part of the township. So your our, our buying power from the super goes up because we are collectively as a township buying more waste capacity. 
So their, their billing isn't going to change. Our, our $11 million isn't going to change based on the fact that we're spreading it over more you use. It's simply not the case. What we're bringing down is the cost per month because we are getting more service. Yes. Because you're going to include their 200 dollars yeah. Correct. So rather than them paying directly to Wolf's Park, they would do the same thing, but they would effectively be coming in with the rest of the township from a, a paperwork stamp. It's, it's a tabletop exercise, nothing more. So in reference, if it's, let's just put it straight down to the center. Yeah. It's 300 for the, the new people a month. Once it's installed, it's $300 a month for the people that, the new system. And they're, I'm using this as an example, it's 100. Yeah. You take that in 500, now we all pay 200. Except that that's not how that would work because we can't do that. And why is that? Second class township code says you can't do that. Yeah. yeah. It's it, you, can't, you can't take the cost of an infrastructure. Problem. No, that's the cost of the infrastructure. Probably yeah. monthly. Yeah. Yeah. They need to be in the maintenance. So we'll just So the yeah. I've been on that side of the board. You do some of that stuff. It's so no longer. Well, I'm not talking service. What I'm saying is when you have that monthly charge, not all of it is just service alone. So no, I'm, I'm just talking the service for the sewage treatment of your waste. We would be looking at the same rate. So if they're paying, let's say, $20 for local work and they want to pay off their infrastructure and their, their bill is $20 a month, mm -hmm. they would continue to pay $20. Mm -hmm. If our sewage rate in the affected area is $20, our bill would be $20 for local work plus whatever. Investment. Right, right. So the, the, the actual rate of sewage, the cost of sewage processing will be the same. Okay. So that's what I, that's what I push for. But yeah. it's going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Treat their EDU versus our EDU. Correct. So the, the actual cost of processing yeah. the, the, the waste, the however you want to get to it, uh, is going to be the same. We're negotiating as the township, but their cost is not going to go up because of the other projects. Right, but then I also wanted to let everybody know that's outside of the scope of the work. That just Marion Township is not just the town; it's the whole township. But those that are in the country will still have their same three-year, because that's what the state mandates. Yeah, that is correct. Oh, well, actually, so let me let me put a bit of that. So that that is correct in the sense that you are required to come out every three years, typically. Our plan actually has a stipulation where if the SEO endorses it, you could actually go up to, I think it's like seven and a half. It's, okay. yeah, it's essentially, it's, it's a little more than two cycles. If you're, let's say, a single homeowner with a very large system and you don't have a lot of chance to build up sediment in your tank, you potentially do that once every eight years every day. So it's, it's not a prescribed like set number like three, and I'll make sure that we're very clear about that. Yep. But as a general rule, um, it's like three or four laws to say that's Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I guess I need to make a little clarification here. So uh, not everybody is going on public sewer every township. Let's make that clear. Only those folks that are in the public sewer area, which was what's that actually at the bottom there. First slide. Second slide. Peter is going to put it up on the screen, the correct slide. So the public sewer area generally runs three steps from down canal to the point of disposal in the walls. Um, the public sewer area includes parts at Conrad Weiser Highway, uh, Canal Road. I think it's Law Valley, Bear Street. But the second, you know, actually, this, this slide here kind of shows uh, where the public sewer area is. So those folks that are in the public sewer area would be required to pay the tapping fee and share the cost of the construction. Folks that are outside of the public sewer area will need to comply with the sewer management program. And that requires the, the three to five year projects. Where they're coming in, they're going to pump your septage out of your tank and do a general inspection of the condition to make sure everything is in place to protect and provide the public, uh, protect the public and water service water. So, just to be clear, public sewer for only those folks that are in the public sewer area. Does that help? 
The stone crop is already in the public square. Okay. You're, you're basically you're going to keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be no change for anybody. Okay. So, so, uh, so for everybody looking at the slide behind me, the the red lines there are just, just the proposed natural effects. Uh, each one of the areas there, uh, blue and yellow, is a particular phase of the project as it's outlined. <laughs> Uh, the the uh, you know starts the, the blue phase first yeah uh, they're they're tied pretty close together so it's largely semantic but uh, uh, it's that's that's the only area in the township where any sort of change is being proposed everybody else would be under the the law management that is required by the state or with a handful of properties like Stone Crawl or two hundred fourteen homes. They would keep doing what they're doing with their current situation for sure. By the way, thank you, Tony, for your comment. Uh, next is uh, Charles uh, Hill. Charles Scoble, 78 Main Street, Scottsford, obviously. Um, I just I wanted to comment because it was many years ago that um, I was looking at buying a home and I used to rent it. And what I gathered from the old one, one thing is, yeah, a little the, close, okay, I usually talk loud anyway, and I don't need a mic. Like, I'm sorry, but all right. Um, you guys have it together much more than the meetings I was at before. Thanks for the love of God. It seems we have some professional individuals and good information, but what I'm gathering from the other meetings and different things I went to years ago is most people don't want the term mandate. Neither do I. We don't want mandate. There's no reason why we couldn't go through with testing. And as long as your septic passes and your neighbor doesn't have fecal in it, there's no, nobody wants to hear the term mandate unless you have a township that has businesses already in the area to support some of the cost. I want to know because I'm also from a very small town too, north of Schoolhaven originally. When a township is poor, and they don't even put money into certain things that renters and kids care about, like the baseball fields back when my son was a kid and, and all the other things. Like Mary Township was a crap hole. When I'm, I'm looking at it, it's like, man, this is a podunk town, like worse than Port Clinton. And now we're talking about putting a sewer in when I'm trying to buy a house here. It makes me want to get pretty much because I don't want to improve any cost. I treat water, I drill wells. I treat water, I install reverse osmosis of a big freedom of managing my own property. And I sold my home in Wolmsdorf because I didn't want to pay sure water. And then I like to use water whenever I want. It's not called wasting, it goes back in the ground. But what happened in Wolmsdorf is just because I want to run the hose, I'm getting charged for my sewer. I'm a big freedom advocate. I believe a lot of people just don't want mandate and they don't. They, you guys are sitting here saying it's mandated, but a lot of people still aren't going to believe you when you leave that there's not another way. I remember all the talk about these online things, but I, for one, as a simple-minded kid back then with a young kid, I said, why would I want to live in a township where they're forcing you to hook up to a fee where like down near King of Prussia and all the other little townships, they have a lot more money from businesses and it's not, I don't want to hear we're going to do it. Right. And then, well, let, me, let me answer the question. Like, yeah. that's, that's the simple the, thing. The, like, the, it's the, layman's terms looking at it. It's like, what? Nobody on fixed income and stuff wants to hear this crap. The, the, you know, the unfortunate reality is that the DEP doesn't care about the cost. They don't care about freedom. They're right. solely focused on what protects the public. So, so what, what, what protects the public health, safety, and welfare? And I don't speak for the DB, I don't defend the DB, but as Joe has referenced, I think their their corrupt basic, basic framework, their basic logic for mandating that the township through the 537 plan and implement it is because of the proximity of our I know that. online system. So I agree. Some of these people like drink in the pool water. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be one to tell you that some wells are polluted. That's not the point. 
The point is, I want the freedom to take care of my own property with my own UV and my own back washing carbon, and we don't want to look into a and I, I, I hear you. The, town, the, the township is constrained by the PD because as a township, we get all of our rights to act as a municipal body from the state. Right? We don't exist without the state's authority. And part of the state's authority comes from the Sewage Facilities Act. And the Sewage Facilities Act gives the DV immense power to uh, regulate and absorb sewage matters. They work for the borough. So I, 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 get, I get legal stuff. I'm a smart guy, whatever. It doesn't matter. The thing is, I simply was like, my God, they're actually going through with this. But I thought when I was coming to this meeting, we were going to hear uh, the grant thing. It's great. I know. I realize that most of you, even though some people here don't believe it, I realize that most of you, possibly all of you, do have overall the best interest. Maybe we like to believe there's an underlying cause. Hey, some business is coming in. That's why we want sewer. No, the, but they don't want to hear people. I don't want to hear Mandy. I don't want to hook up. I don't want to pay that bill if it comes five years from now. I'm going to be one pissed off boy. And I will be putting flags up and signs and all that. You're, you're rich as a choir. I, I moved out here to the city of Reading in 2012. I wanted yes. this to be more like the town that time forgot. Yes. So I, I, I moved out to South Burke because it's a delightful, quiet little town. I love and it. Honestly, having a, a well septic system that you're yes. really self sufficient appeals to me. So please believe me when I say I'm not a fan Let's of. Use of no, this did we would pay ten thousand dollars a year. Minimum. Well, except at some point they will just come in and move it in. They're not just gonna let us keep the mind over here. They're they're not gonna they're gonna do it and then they're going to build us. What happens when they can't use these houses? They'll come in and they'll they'll yeah, how safe one wrong song. Yeah, so they can also shut us down. So they can also shut us down as a tactic. And if that happens, we come to receive a ship and the state's in charge, and the state will do whatever the state wants to do. Yeah, but um, there's, there's also personal liability of the board members up there at state. The EP not only can find a township, they can find the supervisors individually and they can put them in jail. So the, the states are not low here for non compliance. So I know that. With that. I know that. A lot of people have, you know, they have their own opinions about how that goes to DEP, and I get it, but it's just sad that there's no, there's other townships, and I can get you the name, the names where the buildings are right where the sewer ran by, and the bottom line is, they didn't have to hook up whether they liked it or not, and, you know, you guys would say this and that, I don't know what the answer is, you might be right, but how, like, where can I go and see if I get my house deemed a certain way and there's a grandfather clause and I have a newer septic, which I do, the proper leach field, you can't even make me hook up in the USA. The DEP, the, the DEP literally can't either. They're, that's not, you can't. Don't sit here and say, oh, they're forcing us and it's mandated. And so the, the bottom line is, I, it's like I'm in the twilight zone in America. It, it is mandated. It's the whole part of reality And they want, uh, how far away the property is from the so state. I got it, but there's no other option where I promise I only want 30 more seconds. Yeah. I look, I the, I am a I've always thought from the beginning before I had my second child, I said these township meetings are a lot easier. I used to tell my wife how crazy they were and they're just yelling going on and told the hockey police were involved. I thought it was a circus. Now I'm here and I'm like, hey, we got some qualified people, this and all. But the whole thing is the same subject matter that hits home is there is no way that you cannot be able to manage your own property. And if my neighbor's cook was going into my well, I'm going to be PO'd. I'm all for mandated testing every year, even taking water samples as long as I have the individual persons of my own property and I don't have to connect to the sewer and then 20 years from now, my kids got to pay a sewer and water. And that's the biggest subject matter. I think that towards everybody else, there's no option.
It's not I'm still ideologically, I agree with the same. However, the law is not on our side. It's a sim simple way of looking at it, simple minded way, even if you want to laugh. I'm just no, saying no, that's I, I actually want to say love with you in that respect. Unfortunately, the reality of it is the law does not support that. And I realize everything you guys are saying, but I personally, I don't have enough time to look into all the stuff. But if it's a hard pill for me to swallow, that they're that one day they're going to make me hook into the sewer, and unfortunately, what I know about wells and what I know about wells in this area, there's going to be people that are randomly complaining about their water not being drinkable and all. And I know that's not in your favor, and you don't want to hear that, but that's exactly what's going to happen. And it might happen to a hundred out of three hundred, and that's all of a sudden going to be an accrued cost on the homeowner. It's a bull trap. That's all. Thank you very much for your Thank you. Excuse me, I'm yes. um, I just wanted to know if there was a, a way that I could speak. Oh, yeah. So you, you, you would call it sign in. Sign in. Okay. We have 10 minutes left. We have one person, and then we can we can okay. plan to have you make a comment. Okay. Um, so while she's signing in, the next one is uh, Dan Clough. My name is Dan Klein. I live at fourteen Rose Bush Court. I'm a resident of Marion Township, and I live in the Country Club. As a young people, no, we're not a Country Club. We're a contributor to Marion Township. We pay our spring taxes to help support the township. We've already heard the board say. So Trump Village is not really involved in this situation with Act 537, but we as residents would like to help Marion Township. So you'll tell us what we need to do to write a letter to support you. We'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whether it's people in the affected area or other people in the township writing a letter of support saying that again, this is this is crazy, this is an expensive project, people can't afford this unless there's the right amount of grant funding. And it's it's crucial that we get grant funding for every source possible. So if you could write something, um, I'm sure there may even be a template available we can help you with the addresses to the board of supervisors. Uh, I'll send it in. Dan, you have my cell phone. If I need to sort of buy and pick up a bundle of them, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'll, I'll give your cell phone number. I'm going to get every rent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Can you pass her the microphone? She's next. Sure. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Dan, why am I also so everybody can hear because I can I can hear it. My name is Sandy Klein. I live in 14 Rosebush Court, Gay Stone Cross Village. My question is, do we all have to write an individual letter or can we get a petition and just have all of our residents sign it and send it in letter? Because we're going to have some residents that are not going to want to write an individual letter. So, so we can give you a template. We, we can give you a template, or there's a letter that essentially that let's say you write a letter. They don't have to be unique. Okay. As long as they are signed by different residents. So we can take your template, run it off, and have residents sign it. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Hi, it's Fran Krivolowski from Seven Shady Adam Circle. Um, as a person who has been through a similar uh, thing like this in Lake Heritage in Adams County, Gettysburg, um, we were in Mount Joy Township. It was a gated community on a lovely lake, and we were forced to uh, do sewers. They allowed us to keep our wells, and there were no issues with the wells whatsoever compared to what I have here on my property which has cost me close to $20,000 to ameliorate. Um, we had to sell our house in Lake Heritage, which we completely renovated, did everything to, because the cost at the time, back in the 1980s, was close to $30,000.
That was a yearly salary. Now, right now, my husband and I are suffering. Both of us have severe issues as far as our health goes, and we are paying for our food and our gasoline on credit cards. We are almost maxed out. If something like this happens and we sunk all the money into our house, which means we're underwater, uh, what's going to happen if we cannot afford to do this? We are we are maxed out. We are credit carded to the, to the maximum. And uh, if I can go to Giant Food and get points to buy a 25, to get my free 25 gallons of gas, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, it's it's become very, very bad. The situation for us with medical bills and everything else has taken every penny we have. And I'll just give you a short history on what happened with our house. When we bought our house, it passed a VA inspection. They couldn't find the well. They couldn't find the pressure tank. They couldn't find where the electric was. It was dug into the front yard. It was totally illegal. Uh, it was the electric for the well was in a 20 gallon rubber made garbage can filled with water. The uh, pressure tank had been leaking completely through on all of the seams. It had been in there since the 1960s. So on our dime, which we had $20,000 sitting in the bank, a nice little nest egg for retirement, we had to take all of that. When you go into the kitchen to uh, turn the water on, you could like that thing from the, um, uh, where, where they were fracking and they turn the water on, you can light my kitchen faucet like a flamethrower. We had hydrogen sulfide gas in my well in pockets. We, it cost us $9,000 to get the treatment tanks and everything for this. And then we also found out that the uh, septic was illegal, that there was only a 500 gallon holding tank, which is less than the minimum of a thousand. And it was the township guy who came over and found that out. And they forced the guy who sold us the house to put in a secondary tank. Now, I don't know what the difference is gonna be, but I can tell you right now, and I've got the best guys in the world working on this, I use sunlight and they come to my house every six to eight weeks to pump my holding tanks for $200. How do you do that when you're on a minuscule pension and social security? I'm about ready to cry because I just don't know what to do anymore. Every time we have a doctor thing, co-pays for this, traveling to this specialist, going back and forth, in and out, operations and everything else. And, and my husband had to be medevaced out for a serious operation to Doylestown Hospital. And every time I turn around, it's hundreds here, hundreds there. And like I say, everything is maxed out. So as a 72-year-old senior citizen with a husband who's going to be 80, Okay, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. So is this gonna make me lose my house? This was supposed to be my forever little two room retirement house that sits on the bluff overlooking Tulpahocken Creek. How perfect is that? I have a deck. I can go down, stick my feet in the water when it's 90 degrees out and it's beautiful. I don't wanna lose it. As a constituent and as a neighbor, you have my assurance that we will do everything in our power to make sure that you and everybody else affected by this has the absolute most support possible, whether it's individual grants, grants, and township. To put it as a recap of what I said before, if it can't be afforded, we can't do it. And that's the that's the, the line that we have to take. Is there is there's going to be the potentially for certain people, which are need. Different opinions will say one way or the other, but the bottom line is we're being forced to do this. And if we can't do it, we have to dig in and protest that. But there are plenty of people like yourself that can simply can't afford it. There's in, in no reality could you afford that kind of price tag. And please believe me, we know it. 
We don't want you to have to go through that. We don't want any of us to have to go through that. But do you know my neighborhood? Do you know my street? I live on the street. You live on my street. Yeah. Okay. I'm 35 shady counties from Okay, but well, you're probably the guy that dragged us out of the snow uh, two years ago uh, in the SUV when I got back into farm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, you know that these these are little places. These are these are you know. Not crazy tiny homes where you you know you get up at night in the loft and you bang your head in a concussion. Yeah. These are tiny homes, but they're comfortable. And this is exactly where we want it to be. Yeah. It's quiet. You know, my dog runs around in your neighborhood every once in a while, the yeah. black and white one, but she's friendly. Yeah. And my, you know, we're usually running around trying to see where my three-legged cat got off to. Yeah. But uh, but I love where I live, and I don't want to go someplace else. I am a person who ran screaming in the night out of New Jersey. So can you imagine? Yeah, you know? we will do everything to make sure that that does not happen. Okay. Rest sure. Okay, is there paperwork that's going to be passed out with information? Closer to time, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, we're, we're, we've got four minutes left. This uh, lady with the public, she has a question. You can pass the. Make your comments for the purpose of talking. They grab the microphone. Make your, your comments. Just be sure to sign in when you're done. Just... Okay. I just want to take a moment to thank you again, everyone, for coming out this evening. We really appreciate your time. Um, again, if you have this moment, time, whatever it is, if you need to, you can get pulled down to the office. If you need some help writing a letter, any kind of letter uh, would be helpful. And so we'll pass up everything along to Mike Tara. Um, thank you again for coming out. Please go ahead and keep on this. Yeah, go ahead. Good. Like the photo? Yeah. Um, all the letters. Could you send your name and your address, please? Yeah, so the contents of the letter don't have to be different, but it just has to be from a specific person and then sign. In, yeah, in, in very intent, yes. No, no, no. That's what I'm asking. Oh, you can get That's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, I apologize. I thought it had to be residents. So here. <laughs> Um, we're getting official support, so we're going from county reps. So the more people that support the project, the better. So the broader the radius, the more people they recognize are in favor, and then it's going to elevate us. And I can't promise for a level of elevation, but it gets more awareness that Berks County itself cares. And then if Berks County sees that more people are interested in the project, then it gets shown at that level to the state. It, it would help anybody who you know who could, if they're outside the township, I would ask them to write a personal letter explaining why, because then it's very strange if they're signing a template that's meant for the residents of Marion Township. So I want to make that clear. If they're outside, have them write something from the heart. It could be as simple as two sentences to two pages. And as a grant preparer, I read every single letter of support that everybody has submitted in the last year and a half. And it matters to all of us. And so hearing your voices and your stories does make an incredible impact. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Address, address any letters to the board to the robbers. Yeah, last last comment and question for the night. Hi, I'm Randy Dillon, and I'm here at Canal Road. First of all, I don't think Canal Road should be affected by it because I don't live in proper of the town. I don't think it's fair. I have a septic system that works fine. I'm just making that in my opinion. I have my neighbor here, Scott. He just put a, a septic system in on the farm. It was right side of me. He spent a lot of money to put that system in. I was told a couple of years ago, we're gonna to have to actually demolish our old system if this gets put in. Yeah. Is that yeah. something we're gonna to have to pay for to have the to have the sewer put in? Yeah. We're gonna to have to demolish our own old septic system yeah. on our own dime. Yeah, you, you have to decommission it one way or the other, but it's not a situation where you have to dig it out necessarily. No, but I've heard you have to smash it in, yeah. 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 It stone. Yeah. So that's gonna be possible. Thousand dollars or more, probably. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think it's good. Actually, so, since we're at the end of the night, what I will tell you, Ryan, is the reason Canal is on there 
is it, it's the transit map, but there is a section of second class township code that dictates where you have a path of public sort. There is a, um, or what they call it, it's a minimum distance. If you were with, I think it's 150 feet. If you're within that 150 feet by state law, you must hook up to it. There are no exceptions to it. So everybody on the canal is going to have to hook up, even though they have Correct. systems that work fine. Is there a house yes. Well, they're, they're the house is created at 150 feet. So, so unfortunately, yes, and it's it's state law. Like I wish there was a way around. There but it's stating the fact that it's it's unfair. It's totally unfair to the people, and I'm on disability right now and there's some cancer I'm dealing with and I don't I don't have the money. I, I would have to move and try to sell my house because I could not afford twenty thousand dollars. The goal here is not that bad. Okay, you said eight thousand dollars eight million dollars you guys are looking for a grant. Yeah. What if you get it? Uh, minimum. 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 What if you get six thousand? Is that where, where where's the low point where you say no we can't do it? Really, eight million is not a local. So, you can't get eight million. You can't get eight million. We say, like, hey, we obviously in good faith and good faith comply with milestones. We can't do this because the cost is astronomically high for residents. We can't do it. And then you said for people that literally want a fixed income, that there would be money that would be available there to are, us. There are grants for me to specifically for well, I, I will be writing a letter of okay. my situation. And please, absolutely. Please. And you, do I have to put it to a specific person? Or no, this is a board, board of supervisors. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is 9.02 p.m. Oh, no, oh, hold on. We're going to we'll adjourn and then I'll, I'll talk about that for a second. Hi. We uh, met to get that advertisement out for a sweeter. However, just by the nature of how things transpire, and this here, I'll turn this off. Thank you. So Oh, thank you, Bob. It's the tape on there, I think. Oh, so when can you send I, I don't think they their schedule they their pace and we wait for their there, they, there, you know, we don't dictate the pace which they have to and and they'll have to redo.
I was like, oh, I don't know if I can check my script. Sell me. Uh, what? Yeah, I'm going to get a lady that I know the realtor for Century 21. They said scouts for it. 
Just people don't have an I'm happy. I can like plants that work. We are really not protected. But the only I'm very slight. I need to know my dad's decisions and well over that and came back my dad's fear on Well, I'll tell you what. Well, I'll tell you yeah, what, Blanda, there's people in Blanda. Hey. And that's why all their cap sells. You don't see You can't have it at all. Right. So by having the only points and the fewer, you could say, all right, you know what? We're going to have some savings to develop something. A lot of people like that. I understand that. Can... I, I know that the public there'd be more of a tax debate that would alleviate your whole Sometimes it's like, you need to tell me that I own my There's a lot of other time. It's just like, well, don't say There you go. Have a good night, sir. I think you had forwarded it to me, but I don't. I think you were talking to people just reaching out saying, Hi, I know. 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 I yeah, that oh, was yeah. all like, I don't know. Is it okay? Oh, and it's like, 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 it's and then he also needs to do a gap chart yeah. for me that I need to explain what their specific part of the game So two big components of mine for not teach. And that's the only thing that makes me a tad nervous. Because if he's not going to be at the workshop, I don't know what other time I can grab him. Yeah. So let me know so like two yeah. days before the workshop. His intention is like it's two points right now. It's so dry. And if he can't make it, if he can make it faster, just something still in our shop, so we can bring them to the shop and put that in the for me. That stuff is actually we can't have Joe's in this time. Yeah. I would. I don't well, it's all people to the court. I mean, oh my gosh, there's some things I'll sit there. It's all because they're going to have to come joke with you walk into my office and you bring this and you walk out.
So it's I know that this is not not about what in your house you are other than that and I can supply this if you're on the top Yeah, so which which house are you for sure? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, well, that's what the how it's to me That's how I'm like, wow. <laughs> and they're like, and then I just fire a pin. <laughs> See, I get in here for some high blood pressure. I can't even see the Okay, okay. Tables and layers. Right. Yeah. That's Peter's stuff, right? Yep, that's Peter's. Alrighty. Okay. I'm still getting more issues. The way it rolls. It's so many stairs. So Mike can help with guys. No, oh, I know Mike. All right, Jesse. All right, I'll be That's my place. Well, we I think by the end of yeah. Well, it's because they are. Yeah, well, well despite the PA system. Yeah, and you got some people that don't want to you know, you know they're off. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, not a swift thank you so much. Thank you so much. You take care. Yeah. Oh, definitely get in touch. Good. <laughs> Good deal. Take care. Oh, uh, so, Uh, at that time, we were living on 
And Steve went over and go to the And the cat was just, you know, it's a nice person. You know, it's a nice person. And you know, you know, the set of them started for the, you have a, you know, you have a screen going to the beginning of that slide, and then a little handle that goes like this, and you have a little, you know, thing to move a lot if you want to do a I keep getting home and I sleep. My door is flapping. I'm sleeping right to me. 